We reach Varanasi at dusk. We seek the cremation grounds of the ever-elusive Aguri people, seen by many as a cult. We find a group of men performing rituals which lead us to believe they are not the traditional Aguris we are looking for. We do find bodies in various states of cremation. The odor of burning corpses is overwhelming. We are forbidden to turn on our lights. We film what we can in the darkness. Unable to find a true Aguri, we retire to our hotel. The next morning, we observe the locals going about their daily rituals. We see them bathing in the same water that the dead body had been washed in the previous night. To our surprise, we spot what appears to be a true Aguri passing amongst the town people. A classic definition of an Aguri, smeared in ash from the cremation grounds and carrying a human skull. Realizing he's being filmed, he departs. We discover that we are not the only foreigners seeking the Aguri people. We visit Dr. Shatur Vadi, a man knowledgeable in Aguri culture. Human flesh, and that too, particularly of a dead body, and a rotten dead body, is not a very delicious dish. Now the question arises that from the point of view of hygiene, Scientifically, too, it is not correct to do so. There are certain complexes in man, and from those complexes, he is tight. One is grina, what you call hate. If you see something dirty, rotten, that feeling of hate is it. Hmm? Also dirty, having bad odor, bad smell. In order to get rid of this hate, the Aghoris take it. They take it once or twice, and when this feeling of hatred is gone from their heart, no need of eating human flesh, or taking your own urine, or eating your own stool. <laughs> that he lives like a common man, an ordinary man, at times it will be difficult for you to recognize an Aghori from his outward appearance. It is suggested we visit Mr. Rai, who is a practicing Aguri, but not in the traditional sense. We realize that he was present the night before at the cremation grounds. He is, however, well educated regarding classic Aguri practices. He invites us into his house, a very typical, lower-middle-class Varanasi home. 
He is an educated man, an author, and is willing to discuss the rituals of the Aguri and Adis in tracking them down. He shows us around Varanasi and takes us to an Aguri temple. Though the local worshippers are uncomfortable, we are permitted to bring our cameras into the temple. It is a typical Hindu environment, save for a piece of human skull resting on the altar. Mr. Rai explains. Mr. Rai takes us to another temple. When Aguris know they've served their life purpose, they voluntarily come to this place to die. It is upon these pedestals they sit, meditate, and await death to take them. With Mr. Rai accompanying us, we are permitted to revisit the cremation grounds. This time we are not unwelcome. Our cameras are running when aguris begin to arrive. We are forbidden to turn on our lights. We film what we can in the darkness. The cremation ritual begins. This process is designed to cleanse the departed and free them from the mortal world. So free from what? Free from the bondage of the world, the passions of the world. And one who has attained this position while living, he is known as Jeevan Mukta. This is the only footage existing of Aguris consuming their dead. कि हिंदुस्तान में दो तरह की प्रवृत्तियां चलती रही हैं। एक तो वो है जो भगवान को सर्वातीत मानती है, ट्रांसेंडेंटल मानती है, और एक वो प्रवृत्ति है जो भगवान को इमेमेंट मानती है, सब में व्याप्त मानती है। ये दो प्रकार की धाराएं हैं। और दोनों मानने वाले भी एक साथ दोनों को मानते हैं। अघोर शब्द का अर्थ होता है जो कठिन नहीं है, जो सरल है। तो इसलिए अघोर साधना जो है, उसका बल इस बात पर है कि परमात्मा सर्वत्र सब रूप में व्याप्त है। लेकिन साधना की वो धारा, जो उन सब चीजों के प्रति भी भगवत भाव रखती है, और साधना के एक विशेष क्रम के द्वारा ये अनुभव करती है कि सब में परमात्मा है। वो मुर्दे के रूप में भी है, वो कुत्ते के रूप में भी है, वो शव के रूप में भी है, वो स्त्री के रूप में भी है, वो चंडाल के रूप में भी है, सब रूपों में परमात्मा की जो अनुभूति करता है, वो अघोरी है। लेकिन उनके यहाँ शर्त ये है, उनके यहाँ शर्त ये है कि मांस खाने के बाद भी उसका कोई असर आपके शरीर पे नहीं होना स्त्री सेवन करने के बाद अगर एक दफे भी आप स्त्री के की हिप्नोसिस आपके ऊपर आ गई 
स्त्री से आप प्रभावित हो गए और आपका आप स्खलित हो गए तो आप आप आ, साधक नहीं ये मूल मान्यता है उनकी तो उसमें भी तीन तरह की प्रवृत्तियां होती हैं जैसा भगवान ने गीता में कहा सात्विक लोग भी हैं रजोगुणी लोग भी हैं तमोगुणी लोग भी हैं सात्विक लोग देवताओं की आराधना करते हैं रजोगुणी लोग यक्ष और राक्षसियों की आराधना करते हैं और तमोगुणी लोग रूत और प्रशास की आराधना करते हैं तो उसमें ऐसे वर्ग भी हो सकते हैं लेकिन मूल रूप से उनका लक्ष्य यही है और उनके साधना का क्रम भी है and so far as mukti is concerned what is mukti gali i recite a couplet of gali very dear to me such people are jeevan mukt duniya mein ho duniya ka talabgar nahi ho duniya mein ho duniya ka talabgar nahi ho bazar se guzra hu khareedar nahi ho that is the qualification of a person who has attained mukti in this life itself and the very touch of detachment is the soul of a man that's all thank, thank you. you so much <laughs> thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you